Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of Code Break. Today we're going to be talking about polygon collision. So this is what we're going to be making today. We have two polygons that we're going to see when they collide like this. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so basically how this is going to work is we're going to start off with any shape, any polygon, right? And we're going to see if there's another polygon intersecting with it. So there's a lot of math behind this, but basically what you want to do is we're going to have all of the line segments and we're going to see if any of those line segments intersect because if any of them intersect that means that they're a like a collision has occurred so let's get into how we're going to code this so starting off we have our basic html css and index.js i've started by loading the canvas element um, and we also set the height and width to the entire screen size so so far this is what we've got a blank screen full size canvas okay yeah so what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to start off by making the function that creates the polygons. So how we're going to do this is we're going to have, essentially, we're going to feed it its position, the number of sides, we'll do radius, and then the number of sides and the radius. So these are all of our variables. And what we're going to do is, if I can draw this out here, is we're going to have a circle that I'm going to poorly draw. And we're going to start in the middle, we're going to go up, and then we're going to rotate around and put points in each little place. So the point here, let's say it has four sides, point here, point here, and point here, and then the computer is going to connect them for us, and that's how we're going to draw our polygon. So that's really bad drawing, but let's see what this is going to look like. So we're going to have our current angle, and that's going to be equal to math.pi divided by 2, and that's going to be straight up. So if this is the shape right here, the first point is going to be right, right here. All right? So, next, we're going to loop through every single side. So we're going to go like this, make a for loop really quick. Okay. And then for, for the very first point, what we want it to do, so if i is 0, we want, uh, we're going to do canvas.move2. And this is basically just going to get the canvas started to draw a line. Yeah, and before before we do this, actually, I'm going to define our points. So this is just basic trigonometry here. We have our x point, and we're going to be adding on the cosine of the angle. I actually Times forgot the radius. To... People probably thought I was an idiot for writing that. All right. <laughs> um, and then times the radius right here. And then we'll define the y, and that's going to be y plus the radius times math dot sign. sign. Okay. And this is just uh, converting polar coordinates over to normal Cartesian coordinates. Yeah. And then down here, if it's not the first point, what we're going to do is we're going to make a line, line 2. Okay. So this isn't going to do anything yet, so before we go further, we're going to have to start our path. If you don't know how to use JavaScript canvases, there's a ton of videos about them, so you should go check those out. Maybe we might, we'll make some. Yeah, we might make one in the future. And then down here, we're going to do ctx.stroke. Um, and in the beginning thing that you saw, we're going to have the, uh, the polygon's going to change colors if the collision has occurred. So we're going to set the stroke style to color, and I'll define color up here as black for now. Okay. And we'll set the line width to 2 just so that it's a little bit more visible. All right, so so far what we want what we have is something that'll basically create a polygon. So let's make sure that this works. We could be forgetting something. So we'll make it in the center. We'll have a radius of let's do. Well, we're gonna make we want to make it oh, visible, big. so we'll do some, like sixty, okay. and then we'll make it. We'll have it. It'll be a octagon. Stop sign. All right, so we got nothing yet. We have no errors, so this is gonna be. Um, okay, I sorry. I figured out what was the problem here. We need to actually change the angle every single time. And that's how we make it into the polygon. So, full circle is gonna be two pi. So math that pi divided by two or times two. And then we're going to divide it by the number of sides. So that's essentially dividing the whole circle into segments. So this is one segment, two segment, three segment, four segment, and that's how you like 
it knows to go around the circle. So as you can see, we now have a working polygon. So semi-working. Semi-working. Last. So see how this last part right here is missing. We can actually fix that just by going through it one more time. So it creates that last line just by adding equals. And now if we look at it, we have a full shape in the center of our screen. So what we're going to do next is we're going to, we want to save this information because we need to know all the vertices and all the sides of this thing. So we're going to create two new variables. We're going to have a poly one and a poly two. And that's where we're going to save all the vertices of both the polygons. Yeah. So this, for now, we'll just set poly one equal to this. We're going to do some more with this later, but we'll just we'll start off with that. What we want to do now is we're going to return values that are going to be... So we're going to return the points. So basically, let's go up here and start by making points is going to be an array, and sides is going to be an array. So this is the information we're going to need to calculate whether or not the lines are intersecting. So... At the very end here, we want to get all of our points together, and we're going to set that equal to, or sorry, we're going to push, and we're going to push it an object, and it's going to have an X, and a Y, and a Y, and this PX and PY are the vertices of the point we just defined on our polygon. And so now we have a small problem here, though, small problem. So if you look at our polygon, it is here, I just resized the page, so it got messed up, there we go. Um, Wait, sorry. We need to actually return points. So if we see what poly1 is, we're going to get undefined. You have to refresh. There we go. So you see how this first point and this last point are the same. And so actually, all we need to do to fix that is down here at the end, we're just going to do points.pop, and that'll remove that last element. And so now. We only have eight. Which yep. Octagon. So. Perfect. So those are all the points. That was really easy. Next, we want to get all the sides. This part is a little bit more tricky. So sides, basically what that's going to be is it's going to be an array of all the sides. There's going to be eight of them. And they're going to look like this. So each side is going to be an array. And inside that, there's going to be a start point and an end point. Okay? And that's going to have an X and a Y. Oops. And this is going to have an X and a Y. So... And we're basically, the sides array is going to be an array of these arrays. Yeah. Essentially. So what we're going to do here is we, we, we don't have any information about two points at the very first point, if that makes sense. So we only want to add, we only want to push to the sides array if we already have the start point made. So here we're going to do sides.push, and we're going to push, actually I'm just going to copy this right here. And what we're going to do here is this is going to be px and py, right? Yeah. And then this is going to be points i minus 1, so the previous point, dot x and dot y. And so that'll give us a sides range. So what we'll and do all here... all we got to do here is just have an x and a y. Oh, yeah, thank you for that. Okay, and so let's return that. What we're going to do is we're going to turn an object. It's going to have P for points and S for sides. So if we look at that right now, if we look at poly1, you can see we have two arrays. We have all of our points right here, and then we should have all of our sides. So this is the start point and the end point of all of our sides. So perfect. Now that we have all that, let's get back in our code. We're going to start actually doing... We're going to draw it actually now because we need to do the part where the polygon follows our mouse around so let's go ahead and create a draw function right here so basically we're gonna send it or no we're not we're gonna set interval up here so we're gonna draw every 50 milliseconds and we want to draw poly one so actually I'll just copy this and we're going to make another polygon, which is going to have... It's going to actually be at our position. mouse position. So I'm going to make some global variables meanwhile. I'm going to call them MX and MY for mouse X and mouse Y. And I'm then gonna, we just got to have an event listener. So we're going to do uh, window uh, add event listener. 
and it's going to be for mouse move because that's the only time x and y will change and it's going to take a function an anonymous function with event as a parameter so this is how we're going to actually get the x and y positions from from the window and that'll be we're going to set mx equal to event dot client x and these are just you know pre-made variables that we can access from the event object that we get event dot client y and that should update the x and y every time the mouse moves so as you can see here we now have a polygon that follows our mouse as we move it around and we have our polygon in the middle and this is updating every 50 milliseconds so now what we want to do of course is we're going to want to clear the canvas so ctx.clear rect and we're going to clear the entire thing So now we'll have this nice, smooth, working thing in the bob right here. So now that we have both of our polygons, we're going to need to start doing our detection for that. So let's go down here. Let's create a function. It's going to be called collide. And so if they collide, we're going to return true. And if they don't collide, we're going to return false. And so there's a lot of math that goes behind this. And we have all that detailed up here. But this is a lot. So essentially, all of this comes down to this thing right here on the bottom. This is our solution already pre-made into code uh, that we have set up. Um, and I'll put this in the description too if you want to copy this. But essentially, this is checking if the two lines intersect. So let me just explain a little bit, give you a little bit background of what T is. So T, and I'm actually going to change this to TA and TB. So this is for one line segment. You're finding the proportion of the line. And so essentially what that is, if I draw myself a line here, T here is going to be 0. Oops. T here is going to be 0. And T over here is going to be 1. And then right here, it would be 0.5. So basically, it's how far along the line you are. And so if we have two lines now, like this, and we're checking for the intersect point. The intersect point is right here. The computer says this looks like maybe it's t equals 0.4. And then right here, this looks about in the middle, so t equals 0.5. So this would be tb, and this would be ta. And so essentially, we're finding the intersect point using this proportion of the line idea. And so that's what this is going to calculate. And so I'm actually going to create another function down here just for that. Called intersect which basically just uses that formula that we derived it uses like matrix algebra basically to solve for what proportions the lines intersect and we're gonna know if they intersect if both of these are in between 0 and 1 if they're greater than that that means if you had extended those line segments to infinity they would intersect but Basically, if at their present length, they don't intersect. So let me give you an example of that. These are our two lines right here. You can see clearly they don't intersect. The t for this, it would calculate the t to be maybe something like 0.6. And down here, this thing would think that the t is greater than 1. So you see if the line extended down here, it would eventually hit. But the t value is going to be greater than 1, so it didn't intersect. And so that's what we're going to check for. In our code. So one thing we do also have to be careful of is if the lines are collinear. So that is if they're like on top of each other, basically. And so or, or parallel. Or parallel. So this bottom part right here, you can see we're dividing by this section right here. You don't want to divide by a zero. It's going to return undefined. So we got to check if this bottom part is zero. And if it is zero, we're just going to return collinear, just so we know that those lines are collinear. So there's a lot of variables. This is S2, S1. This is our sides array that I gave you before. So poly1.s. That's these right here. And so what we actually need to do is we need to pass it side 1 and side 2. And that way, it'll calculate the TA and the TB for these two sides. Yeah. 
So what we need to do next is we need to actually check if uh, and if, if any of the sides are intersecting. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the sides. So we're going to pass both of our polygons. So that's going to be P1 and P2. And we're going to check, are the sides intersecting? So what we want to do first is we're going to do for variable i in P1.s. So we're going to go through all the sides in that. And then inside of that, we're going to do so essentially what this is doing is it's going through all the sides in P1 and all the sides in P2, and it's going to check every single combination. To see if they're to, Yeah, to see if they're intersecting. So now we're going to uh, use our formula that we just made. So variable t is going to be inter intersect P1 um, oh, dot s i, like that, and then P2 dot s j. Okay. And actually, what I added is I added a return that returns oh, thank TA you. and TV down here. So now we can actually get those variables. So T0 is going to be TA, and T1 is going to be TB. So what we want to do first is we want to check if T equals collinear. Then we're going to just continue. Um, because we don't want any, we don't want any errors, errors. We just want to, we want to ignore it. Basically, it's not colliding, so it's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see if that if these t values are between 0 and 1. So we're going to say if t 0 is less than or equal to 1 and t 0 is greater than or equal to 0. So that's checking if uh, t a is within 0 and 1. And then now we're checking so t index 1 is actually TB, and we're checking if that's in between 0 and 1 as well. So if this is true, then those two lines that we are looping through are intersecting, and we're just going to want to straight up return true. We can stop the entire function. Two lines are crossing. There is a collision. Otherwise, we don't, well, don't want to do anything. At the very end of the function, we're going to return false, because that means it never detected a collision. There is no collision. All right. So now we're going to want to make sure this works. I'm pretty sure we have everything squared away. So what we want to do is we want to check for the collision in the draw function. So after we draw the polygons, we're going to want to do collision. Rather before, huh? Because we have to change the color. No, we can. Yeah, we can. Yeah, OK. So actually, no, we're going to have to do it after. And I'll explain why in a second. Oh, because we need the points. So the poly 1 and poly 2 start off as undefined. And so if we do this before, it'll give you an error right away because these aren't defined yet. So if these two things are colliding, we're going to set the color equal to red. And so now let's see if this works. Oh, I spelled it's something wrong. It's collide. Oops, yeah. Did I do that somewhere else too? Oh, no, I didn't. OK, so it looks like we are. Oh, we're not. Sorry. This is really simple. We just do else. We're going to set the color back to black. So if they're not colliding, the color is going to go back to black. Because what we did there is it, it knows that it's not colliding, but we just never set the color back. All right, so now you can see we have a final finished working example. You can play around with this. Use it in all the games, I guess, if you want. This is a perfect example for a hitbox. You don't have to use regular polygons like this either. You could feed it at like a, Any an points. object of yeah, vertices yeah. or anything like that. This is just the basic idea, and I hope you guys can build on this. And I would like to point out one issue with the way this works. If you see here, if the object is entirely inside of the object, of the other polygon, sorry, it's not going to detect a collision. Now, this isn't really a huge problem for most video games, because when you detect collision, it's something like this. Let's say there's this is your character, and my arrow is the bullet, and the bullet's coming towards the character, and oh, it hits him, and it detects collision, and the character dies, or the bullet goes away, and that's fine. So it's not, it's not going to be usually, it's not usually going to be a problem. It's Sorry. never going to get to the point where it ends up inside of the. Yeah, other and it'll already nature. detect a collision because the object didn't start inside of it. And of course, there is a way to detect this. Um, and if you'd like us to make a video on that, we can. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. Thank you guys for watching. See you later.